Where have you been this weekend? Well, I, I can't tell you that, Gina. It's, uh, it's top secret. Can you give me a hint? Well, yeah, I could give you a hint. Um, I'll give you a hint if you download the One Football app from the top line of the description for absolutely free. It's the best football app out there to keep up to date. More importantly, with all of the Euro and Copper America stuff going on right now, obviously the two big international tournaments going on, download the One Football app. You can keep up to date with all of the latest news and scores and updates from across both tournaments as they happen really quickly better than any other app out there so download that and then maybe i'll tell you gina i looked at your twitter it says you were at twycross zoo yeah but i wasn't at twycross zoo all weekend you know i was doing other stuff as well gina G gina gina's gone Hello and welcome back to On The Rocks. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode as we take on RZ in both legs of the final qualifying stage of the Champions League as well as Kilmarnock in the league, sort of wedged in the middle nicely. First things first, apologies for no videos over the weekend. I ended up having a bit of an impromptu weekend off. It wasn't really planned, um, but... I just had the weekend off in the end and I couldn't be asked to make videos in the evening. So there we go. That was kind of it. I was out all day, got back home, couldn't be asked. So apologies, but you know, it's nice to recharge the batteries every now and again. Anyway, because we are back, we'd massively appreciate it if you guys could drop some likes on today's video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and leave some comments down below for the YouTube algorithm. So I haven't recorded anything since Friday, but luckily we've not done much since Friday on the grounds that we only had one game in between episodes to play. Lewis Ferguson scored a penalty penalty against St Mirren in the Betfred Cup second round to ensure we won that one 1-0 one we can kind of see behind my head here that we had a very different rotated lineup for this one so uh for went Labrada playing I can still say his name all wrong I'll get it right one one day for went Albert I'm saying it right for went Albert was in goal for that one played very very well uh Norton Cuffey played that one Mike Taggart played that one Awusu Thad McRae Robert Dedow Stephen Wilson all these kind of people played Speaking of Stephen Wilson, he was actually in the most recent youth intake as well. I just sort of missed it on the Patreon, as in like I missed the person claiming him on the Patreon. So I do apologise massively. It's not the only one I missed, weirdly. Um, clearly, I'm just not quite with it at the moment. Stephen Wilson, our very good left winger who came through our youth system. He is now going to be known as Jez Finley. And then we have a very talented centre midfielder currently in the youth team right now, but looking really, really good and should be a decent player for us in a couple of seasons' time. Charlie Monroe is no longer going to be called Charlie Munro. We're going to be calling him Michael Sweeney instead. And then finally, Wayne Garnham is a young striker that's come through with five star potential. He's five foot ten, but a target man. I think we'll train him as something else on the ground. That doesn't quite add up to me as five foot ten target man. But Wayne is now going to be known as Damien Wood. So thank you very much to the newest member of the Patreon, Jamie Wood. Of course, if you guys want to get involved in the Patreon, link down in the description to get signed up there. So we're going to get straight into things in today's episodes with today's games against RZ. We are away from home first, which hopefully means we'll get some nice away goals and score plenty of them. Because it's a Champions League game and we do really need to win, Bazunu, the best keeper, is going to be starting in goal forward. But the back line is Admilson, Caio Henrique, Suva and Torres. Campbell and Tamak Lumper in the middle with La Cruz and Knight on the wings and Nisbet and Taylor leading the line. So as kickoff is upon us here today, this is a big one. You know, this is one win away from a second Champions League appearance for at least the, the group stage of the Champions League. And to be honest, we need it for the money because we spent a lot this summer and we're spending a lot more on wages than we have been in the past. We desperately need the Champions League money to be able to afford all of it. So this is a huge game for us. It's not really pride anymore. It's genuine financial survival getting to the Champions League. Now personally I think that RZ are not quite as good as Dinamo Kiev who we beat yesterday so I am feeling confident heading into this game but of course plenty of times in the past I've said that and we've been absolutely battered. This game though nothing really happening of note. The first real highlight of the game looks like it could be coming right now as Admilson gets the ball into Tamat Lumper into Campbell back to Admilson who can put a ball into the middle. Can someone put a ball in the middle? Admilson does. Caio Henrique is there and the two young Brazilians combining beautifully to score the opening goal of the game and a crucial away goal for us. Let's watch this one back again as it's just nicely worked around the edge of the area to be fair and it's a good 
good little cross in the end from Ad Milson, who just picks out Kai Henrique. He was completely unmarked, and that is what we signed him to do. I mean, actually, we signed him to defend. He's a centre-back first and foremost, but he is also there to score goals from... Well, more set piece. I don't know what he's doing up there, actually, if I'm honest with you. There was no set piece involved, was there? I don't can't remember at least. It's like it was a corner or a free kick. So why he's so far up the pitch when he should be at centre back, I don't really know, but I'm not gonna complain because he scored. But a 1-0 suits us down to the ground quite nicely. Obviously, 2-0 would be much nicer. And 3-0, even I'm just listing off scores that are bigger and bigger. That's what I'm doing there. But um the point is, right, the point is we've got the away goal, we've not conceded they're going to have to pull out a sort of a masterclass if they come to our place or when they come to our place if they want to beat us. We have a big hand right now in that Champions League group stage draw. Hopefully we can pull ourselves in there by the end of the second leg. But RZ, with their first real highlight of the game, I've not seen them do anything so far, look to get it into Myron Boadu in the middle who might have had a bit of a nerf in foot manager or just hasn't done particularly well in this particular save file on the grounds that he's still at RZ because normally he sort of develops into a bit of a world-class striker. It's worth scouting him out. We could try and sign him at some point, maybe, but uh, I'm pretty happy with our strikers at the moment, although they've not actually scored today, and they are both on 6.4 ratings, so maybe I'm not too happy with them. I've also completely neglected to make any sort of substitution, but it doesn't matter too much, because we will rotate the team massively for the Kilmarnock game anyway, so I'm not too fussed about that. Can we score one final goal as Ben Knight can't score that final. Don't concede now. Let's not concede now. You've done so well all game. Let's not mess it up right now and concede. Bazunu, great save. Looking like he's going to keep a clean sheet today. As the clock ticks down, we go to the 94th minute. The referee blows his whistle. We've won the away leg 1-0, which is fantastic. Gives us one hand into that Europa, not Europa, Champions League draw. Great stuff. Kai Henrique on form with his one goal, 8.2 rating and four key headers won. We're going to praise him for that. You were superb in front of goal last time out. We need to get him on a new contract. He's just signed for us, obviously but we need to get him on a new contract ASAP without a release fee clause in there. So for the Kilmarnock game coming up, uh, I've not shown you the league table on the grounds that it's not changed since last episode, but just for a quick reminder, there it is. We're currently second on six points as our Celtic. Uh, Kilmarnock on three. Rangers only played one game so far, but only on the one point, so three points, sorry. So hopefully they don't win more of that. You know what I'm trying to say. The team though is going to be very, very different. Let's get Fuentalba on the pitch for Bazunu for his league debut. Played in the cup, but not the league yet. Let's also get Johnny Herrera on at centre back instead of Suva. Let's get Lewis Ferguson on instead of Campbell. Let's get... Winks on instead of Tam Lump. Let's swap those two over, actually, I'd probably say. Let's also get Brian Portier on the left back position. Let's also change everything else possible. Let's get Jez Finley playing instead of LaCruz. Let's get Thad McRae on instead of Taylor. But other than that, we will leave the rest of the team as it is, I believe. So some big changes to the starting lineup. I think we have to do that quite a lot this season to keep battling on several different fronts. Obviously, the league is a big priority, as is the Champions League. The Cups, not so much, but it's always nice to do well in the Cups to take some silverware away from other teams. And I guess the aim every season should be to win some bit of silverware of some kind. And... I think that's a good way to do it by the cups. Apparently, immediately, Jez Finley has suffered some sort of like knee injury uh, and has now got to come off the pitch. It was giving me some warnings, and now he does have to come off the pitch. So, another great league debut for Jez Finley there. Anthony Gordon will come on instead for him on the left hand side. First real highlight of the game comes to us, and Anthony Gordon gets a goal from the corner. You love to see it. Ben Knight swinging it in. Anthony Gordon nodding it in with his head. Brilliant stuff from us there. The first highlight of the game pretty much as well, I believe, as Gordon scores a goal. It's what he loves to do. Gordon just scores goals for fun. To the point where I just feel like maybe it's just worth playing him all season anyway on the grounds that he just does score goals wherever he goes. I say wherever he goes. He's always playing for us, but he always scores goals for us. And to be fair, it doesn't really matter how many goals we score just as long as we get the three points. And that's what it's looking like right now. If we could have a nice quiet second half, that would be lovely. Although saying that, actually, a couple more goals would do quite nicely to catch up to the goal difference of Celtic so far. So if uh, Thad McRae wants to score some goals, that would be lovely. As Harry Winks gets it out to Ferguson into Nisbet, over to Torres. Torres to put this one back to Nisbet. Nisbet to Ferguson. Ferguson on the edge of the area shoots puts it just over the bar. None of our strikers really having much luck in the previous couple of games or so. Uh, no one's really scored, and in fact, strikers haven't scored for the past like three or four games. So 
we maybe need to address that somehow, but they usually end up with 20 plus goals each anyway. So I'm not too concerned just yet. Might just take them a little bit of time to get going, but we might take Thad off for Dale in a minute just to see if we can get him scoring some goals against Kilmarnock. I think he's on the bench at least as Gordon can't get on the end of the loose ball, but we still look to come forward through Ferguson. Nisbet out to Brian Portier. Brian Portier keeps it in play, puts it back to Ferguson on the edge of the area who shoots and scores and Ferguson gets his third of the season. We get our second of the game. You'll love to see it. We shall also bring Dale Taylor on for Thad McRae at the same time and Kai Henrique not in a poor game or not in a great game having a poor game I should say is going to come off for Mike Taggart. The rest of this game though does look to be just skipping by quite nicely. We've had so many shots 21 to Kilmarnock's 5. We're not really putting too many of them in the back of the net. That's my biggest concern. Our shot to goal ratio is not particularly great right now in terms of especially shots on target to, to goals ratio. It's not particularly high as well, that should not have gone in the back of the net, should it? That is a very soft goal to concede from distance. And this is why Bazunu will remain to be our number one for the big games for the time being. Because he would not make that sort of mistake. I don't know what Fuentalba is doing in that situation. But it's, it's not being a goalkeeper, that's for sure. And suddenly, for a game which is absolutely dominated by us on the stats looks very, very close on the scoreline, which is not particularly nice at all. As we've just hit the post there, somehow that's not been turned in the back of that. I mean, we're winning games, right? We can't complain too much. We're winning games. I'd just like to see more of these 13 shots on target and 27 shots in total go in the back of the net. Luckily for Jess Finley, the injury isn't too bad, only out for five to eight days or so. So won't be involved in the RZ game, but should be back in time for other games after that, which is great. Probably not Rangers though. Let's not try and against Rangers. RZ though is going to be a big game. Obviously we need to win it. And then we can win that and go through to the Champions League group stage draw, which happens the day after. Now, we've actually got quite a few coefficient points now. Is it 46 coefficient points we saw in a couple of episodes ago? I believe that might mean we are not going to be a fourth seeded team anymore. We might actually end up being something like a third seeded team, which would be, I don't know, nice maybe? Theoretically, it makes the draw a lot easier for us, but we've seen time and time again in the past that sometimes the fourth seeded teams are ridiculously good. Oh, very exciting too. The stadium expansion has been completed. We now have 25,000 seats in the stadium, which is perfect. It's literally just in time for this game against RZ. So we're going to go back to our very strong lineup. So go back to the 442 standard stuff, which is fantastic. And uh, Nisbet looking a little tired for this one. So let's swap them over with Thad McRae instead. Or maybe Harry, Harry Storm's still injured. That's a bit annoying. You can't see it. It's kind of behind me a little bit. He's still out for another two weeks or so with a twisted ankle. So yeah, we'll keep Thad McRae on as that deep line forward. But this now is a huge game. A huge game and phew, let's not mess it up, please. So as a quick recap, although not quite sure why you need it, given that we played the first leg literally five, ten minutes ago, uh, we are 1-0 up, so we have that one away goal right now. But that counts for nothing if RZ score an away goal, which they could do right now as they get the ball into the box and uh, luckily don't get the shot away properly. But they still hold on possession until Admilson gets a good interception. Oh, La Cruz nearly gives it straight to the RZ man then. That had... Nightmare written all over it essentially, although RZ still have possession and the highlight still continues. Is Boadu going to pull off any sort of magic here? No, because Devitt nearly does. Bazuna collects for loose ball, and that's a little bit. Of, the highlight still goes on. Can it just finish now? I think we've had enough of this highlight now because it's all RZ, and I don't want to see it. At well, the away goal that we had counts for nothing now. So, uh, well done, boys. Good start to the game. I was about to start saying like how great we were in you know that first leg defensively. RZ were better than us in that first leg. They had more shots, but we held them back and they didn't create anything at all. It takes them eight minutes in this game to do something. And here we go. Here's another one. Not quite another one. Le Cruz, right, counter-attack. It's a three-on-two situation. Thad McRae is through. Thad, Thad McRae can't score. Thad, come on. I mean, luckily, we've got a lot of time to score another goal. You know, we can just level things at 1-1 and then we go through on aggregate as Dale Taylor this time. Can't score. Throw in for us. Add Milson into the middle to absolutely no one. But does win the ball back. Look, it's Ben Knight. Ben Knight was completely open. It doesn't matter because Dale Taylor gets in there instead, brings the score to 1-1 on the night and to 2-1 on aggregate. So that's looking quite nice. 
The only issue now is that if RZ score any more goals, they have the away goal advantage, which is uh, not good. So we need to be there defensively sound. And now I'm getting very nervous because here come RZ on the attack immediately after we score, which is usually a very vulnerable time to concede as they play the ball lovely around the area, lovely passing. We can just about stop them from getting the attack in there properly, but they still hold on to possession, keeping it out wide. And Milson misses a slide challenge there. If, how has that gone in? How has that gone in? Can someone tell me how that has been allowed to go in the back of the net? And Milson misses the slide challenge. Who's the, I think that's Suva or is it Kai, Kai Henrique does nothing. Bazunu can't stop a shot from a stupid angle. <sighs> okay, we're, we're now back on the back foot again. So as it stands, RZ have two away goals to our one away goal. So despite it being 2-2, they are going through. Although Thad McRae just scores another goal immediately afterwards. His first of the season to make it 3-2. Can we just have no more goals now, please? Nice to finally see two strikers on the score sheet in the same game as well. That's good to see. But as Bazunu just about clears that ball out, we've still got a little bit of time before halftime as Dale Taylor finds Stab McRae, who can't score his second of the game to put the, well, I say put the game beyond all doubt. There's probably still an awful lot of doubt, even if we go 3-2 up in this leg and 4-2 up on aggregate. You've seen how we capitulate in the past, and we could easily do it again. Annoyingly, the cameras just suddenly stop working as La Cruz gets injured. One second. There we go. La Cruz injured at the start of the second half. Uh, Anthony Gordon will come on for him, and Campbell's going to come off for Harry Winks. Stay solid out there, boys. Stay solid. I mean, luckily, there's been no highlights yet. Apart from... No, right. RZ, please don't score. If they score, I'll be very upset. Really upset as we clear the ball out from the back, but only as far as RZ defenders. As they lose possession, right? Thad McRae's in. Square it to Taylor. Taylor to shoot. Taylor to hit the Taylor to hit the post. That's not what the sentence was meant to be. It was meant to be Taylor to score. He hits I <sighs> We have made some calamitous errors today. Going forward and defending. And I really hope it's not going to bite us in the back right now. Because Really, we should have put the game beyond all doubt by defending better and scoring our chances. And we haven't really done either of those well, I'll be honest. Uh, we have scored some, which has been good, but we haven't really defended very well. Can Taylor win this one? He does, right? Taylor with another chance to redeem himself. Not redeeming himself. 20 minutes to go, and I do not feel confident in our abilities to, one, score goals, or two, not concede a goal right now. Stav McRae is helped by the keeper massively. I think Thabba Cray's header is just palmed into the back of the net by the keeper. But with 15 minutes to go, it's looking ever so more likely we're going to the Champions League group stages. Yeah, the keeper just palms into the back of his net there. But a good goal for Thabba Cray in the Champions League. Two goals for him this evening. 10 minutes to go. Come on, lads. Let's not do anything silly out there. Let's just sort it all out nicely. Don't concede a goal. Keep solids. Five minutes of added time to go. That should be enough to see us get through. And it is enough to see us get through into the Champions League. you love to see it. I love it when away goals work out for you nicely. But when that wasn't going our way with the away goals, I, I hate the rule. Hate Get rid of the rule completely when it doesn't work for me. When it works for me, keep it. When it doesn't work for me, needs to be got rid of. Annoyingly, Le Cruz has broken his wrist in that game and is going to be out for six or seven weeks with a broken wrist, which is uh, not ideal for him or us. But it does mean that Gordon will get a prolonged run in the team. Anyway, you'd love to see it. 13 million, or basically 14 million pounds for reaching the Champions League group stage, which is just so much money. So it's like more than double, I think, what you get for the Europa League, as we've also had our facilities upgraded to for the club's youth facilities, which is nice. And then to finish off today's episode, it's the Champions League group stage draw, where we are now a third seeded team because of the coefficient points. So let's go through all of the top seeded teams. So in group A is Benfica, Juventus, PSG, Atletico, Milan, Man City, Bayern Munich, and Tottenham Hotspur. Ideally, I'd want to be in the group with Benfica um, because on the grounds that Portugal aren't as good as other countries, unless you're Portuguese, of course, then you're the best country in the world for football, obviously. Uh, in the second seed, let's see where this one goes. Chelsea into Group A. That makes me think Group A is maybe not quite so kind in the end. Dortmund into Man United, Liverpool, Leipzig, Barcelona, 
Madrid. Hmm. You know what? I think I'd still like to be in Group A. I think Group A would still be quite nice. I don't really fancy any. I don't really fancy any of the groups. I can't really see us doing much in any of the groups. Um, so yeah, Group A would be the best one for me, and we're going to be in not Group A, but Celtic get Group A. Celtic in Group A now that they could do something there, you know, they could get a top two finish there. Come on, Celtic! I I'm back in those boys there. We are not going to be in Group B because Ajax are there. Hertha in Group C, Shakhtar in Group D, Porto in Group E, Aberdeen in Group F with Leipzig and Man City. Now, I'm not entirely sure how good Leipzig are in this version of the universe. Uh, we'll double check maybe and see how they've done. Man City, I believe, are the best team in the Premier League. They won the Premier League last season, so... They're very, very good. Last season, uh, Leipzig came third and had two fourth place finishes before that. So mm, potentially beatable, but I'm not so confident about them. And then, of course, the final seeded teams, who are we going to get? Group A, get Villarreal. Uh, group B, get Ludogrets. Group C, get AK. Group D, get Barté. Group E, get Zenit. We're going to have quite a tough one in Dinamo. Although I feel like we've beaten them before, maybe. And then Basel and uh, Sporting in the final two groups as well. So it's a group we should be aiming for at least third in. I don't know how good Leipzig are. Man City should win the group. We might have a chance against Leipzig. Dinamo we should be beating. It's a tough group, though. Apparently, though, we've never played Dinamo in the past, so I'm not entirely sure where I thought we'd beaten them in the past from. Probably different saves, I guess, I imagine. So for me, given that Leipzig is probably going to be the most contentious game there and probably the most important in the group stage, I think we do that one next episode alongside St. Johnston. So thank you so much for watching today's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.